welcome to another amazing, amazing episode of Suave and Sassy Seniors with Sonia. I'm Sonia, and I'm so excited to be here. Listen, just in case, just in case this is your first time watching the show, I want to tell you why the show was developed. This show was developed, was developed to highlight seniors living their best life. Many people, especially young people, believe as we age or season or marinate, we fade. But that's not true. Many seniors are living their best life. Really, this is when we start doing our own thing and living. I bring to you people that I call our greatest generation, people that are seniors, that are retired, starting new businesses, not retired, writing books, coaching, counseling, doing all sorts of things. So this is why this show was developed. So I'm glad you're here. Today, I have a very dear, dear guest. I met my guest today, and she's wearing yellow because she was my sunshine. I met her when I first moved to Florida. And when my grandmother moved in with me, Cheryl Harris has always worked with seniors in aging populations. And she assisted me with my grandmother when she moved from Michigan to Florida to be with me. She was living with me and then she wanted her own place with one leg. She still wanted to be independent. Cheryl helped my mother, my grandmother gain her own independence. And for that, she's near to my heart. She's also an amazing woman of God. She's prayed me through some, some, some journeys in life. So I'm humbled and honored to have Cheryl on my show. And welcome, Cheryl. Thank you so much. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, you just recently retired. Absolutely. And what, now, what were you doing? Tell, just tell us a little bit about what your, your journey. A senior activity specialist over a senior center. So my job was to provide services, uh, activities, plan field trips, slight counseling, meaning a listening ear to the seniors, you know, connecting them with referrals and just trying to encourage them to have a great life as a senior and not just sit dormant or sit home. And so that was pretty much what I was doing and I enjoyed it. And so you know firsthand how important it is for seniors to be active. It's important yes. for as we age to continue to move and, and act not just our physical body, but our mental. Yes. It's, a, it's, it's important to connect and be active in your life, living daily and doing things, correct? Absolutely. And to connect with other people. Because some seniors just sit at home, watch TV all day long, eat snack, but they're not moving physically or socially. Mm. So you need to connect. The city of Jacksonville has a wonderful program for seniors 60 and older that are active. It doesn't mean if you have a mobile chair or a walker or a cane, you can't be a part of it. What it simply means is if you go out on a field trip with us, you have to be able to get back to the bus. So if you're 60 or older, you, I don't drive. That's okay. We got you. We have 19 centers around the city of Jacksonville, and all you have to do is call transportation. They can tell you which center is closest to you, and it doesn't cost anything. So, and that's the good thing. That's the good thing. So thank you for that, and thank you for all you've done and dedicated your career to helping seniors. But now, mm -hmm. the other side, you've been married for 35 years, yeah. and you have seven children and 30 grandchildren yeah. and five great grandchildren yeah. and you look good you. when whenever my kids have kids because i don't have any grandchildren just just putting that out there not no pressure just out there so when 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 i get having grandkids i, I want to look as good as you is that fair that's, enough that's fair enough you look good girl so i'm sure you I, I hope i keep this yes. but listen being married 35 years you've been a ment you're a mentor to me in my marriage You've been able to mentor a lot of women. So what you've done is written a book mm -hmm. because a lot of young women don't understand the art of singleness, right? Yes, correct. So tell us about single ladies, get the goods, not the garbage. Talk to, talk to us about the goods <laughs> and not the garbage because don't nobody want garbage. No. It stinks. 
And here's the garbage thing. Garbage things. <laughs> here's the thing. It doesn't mean the person is garbage. It means they are not the right fit for you. Wait a minute. Repeat that. It doesn't mean they're garbage. They're not the right fit for you. We've all heard the statement, one man's trash is another man's treasure. You could put a chair out just because the arms are worn on it. And there's a little bit of wear on the wood. So you sit it on the side of the curb. Somebody drives by and says, oh, my goodness, that's just what I've been looking for. Um, can I have that chair? You say, yes. And I have the sofa to match. I'm about <laughs> to put it out to you. You want that? And they're just going crazy. It's their treasure. That's right. So what was trash to you, you put it out, and it was somebody else's treasure. And when they get through making it over and working it out, then... It's a treasure to them. So mm. this I like book, that. I like that. This book is the story of a young woman who was looking for love in what? All the wrong places and people. Mm. And that's good. Out of desperation, sometimes we have in our heart and mind what type of man we would want. But what we should be saying is, God, what kind of man do I need? I don't know where it came from. Maybe the fairy tales. I want tall, dark, and handsome. Well, what if he's five, two and a half? It's a man of integrity, a man of God, a man who loves you and treats you like a queen. So you're going to pass up the king because he's not six feet tall? Sometimes people have... I heard um, a, a preacher on the radio say they looking for six feet tall. Sometimes you have a, a a clown with a crown, and that's what you calling your king. You calling a clown with a crown your king because you looking for somebody six feet tall that that just fairy tale thing, exactly. and that might not be what's for you. Absolutely. But I want to back it back a little bit. Something you said that was so profound. You said just because it's it's not for you doesn't mean it's not for someone else. Right. So sometimes you're holding on to something that doesn't belong to you. You stopping somebody, you you holding on to somebody else, man. Right. And you having all these troubles and trials. And I believe that people put up with stuff because they don't have enough confidence in themselves. Absolutely. So sometimes you need to step back, read a good book, and reevaluate what what's good for you. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So sure. Can you tell us some of the common mistakes that single women make? in dating and finding that perfect person for them first of all you've got to love yourself you can't love anybody else if you don't love who you are mm -hmm. you have to love yourself after loving yourself know your worth wow you gotta, wow you gotta wow. you gotta know your worth because if you don't think you deserve better you'll accept anything you'll allow anything uh one common mistake that i see is young women letting a man move in with them or they're moving in with them and you have your own place your own freedom you doing wifely everything that a wife would do cleaning cooking and everything else but you're not married Wait a minute, wait a minute, sure. So now you 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 crackling on some stuff right here mm -hmm. so you don't think it's good for people to and I want people to, to comment in the post. Comment. You don't think it's good for people to live together. If you don't think it's good for a woman to live with a man before she's married to him. Because people say, well, I, I don't know somebody until I live with them. Yeah. So a lot of people feel that if I don't live with them, how will I know if he's the one for me? So what, you know, talk about that. First, get to know them. Be friends. See if you have common likes common thought process about finances about what your future goals are where you want to be in five ten years talk with the person listen to the person my pastor pastor kelvin postel is a greater work love pastor postel he <laughs> says if you listen to the person's conversation within the first seven minutes you'll know who he is what he's looking for if he's looking for girlfriend material and you want to be a wife he's not it now that's good that's good because some women we have in our mind and we want to be a wife and this man he 
He's not ready for that. And we invest all this time into it and it's not. I also heard uh, someone say that as women, don't lay your body down to a man who won't lay his life down for you. Oh, that, that's good. Why? Why are you giving up all your goodies if he won't give up nothing for you? Exactly. If a man wants you, you will know right away. Exactly. You'll know right away. And don't be paying for nobody. I don't give no money to nobody. No. I, I, I give you no money. Neither. If you ain't got no money, look, I'm just saying, God is good in single women. If you ever want to know about dating and being single and single living, this would be a good book to read. Wouldn't it, Cheryl? Absolutely. I am the professor <laughs> of the class of stupidity one, two, and three. So I'm trying to save, save somebody <laughs> from the mistake. And the thing is, the enemy does not have any new tricks. Young women, please leave the married men alone. Wait a minute. Sila. Say that one more time. Please leave the married men alone. And say it one, for, one more for the yeah, Holy Spirit. And please leave the married men alone because here's the thing. They give the same line that they've been given for centuries. You know, she just don't treat me right, but you treat me the way I want to be treated. And we're going to get married. I'm just waiting for her to sign the papers and all other Can kind I ask of stories. We don't even sleep in the same bedroom. They tell you that line too. We don't even sleep in the same bedroom. Right. We just together for the kids. What other lines they say, yeah. sure? Oh, but here's another thing. You don't go out during the daytime to be seen together with them. You go out at night and then it's some little place in the corner, in the booth, in the back, in the dog. <laughs> you know, okay, so what's that? There's a problem. Yeah. Oh, don't paste no pictures of us on Facebook. Don't post no pictures of us on any social media, you know, until I get the divorce right. How long are you going to listen to that line? How, how long are you going to wait for this person to supposedly choose you as wife material? If he's cheating on her, he will cheat on you. Wow. That was a mouthful. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 a lot. That's personal. So are some of these issues addressed in this book, Cheryl? Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Is the book available now? It is available for pre-order online. So please pre-order your book now. Mm -hmm. Wow. So people can pre-order now and the link will be available below if, when you want to order the book. Now, Cheryl, every time someone comes on the show, mm -hmm. we ask them to give us a golden nugget. Mm -hmm. We, we want to take something that we can carry away with us and keep. You said some good stuff, talking about uh, the dating the married men and, and moving in with shacking and everything. But we want a nugget to carry away. Okay. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't settle. Ask God for what you want. Believe it. There is absolutely nothing too hard for God. So keep dreaming follow your dreams and most importantly keep god first and follow god thank you Cheryl. listen pre-order this book it looks amazing single ladies get the goods and not the garbage by cheryl harris the link will be below click and subscribe to this youtube channel and share this this post thank you cheryl for being here and as i always say stay safe and stay courageous bye